Welcome those of you joining us from the Georgia-Arkansas game. Georgia bouncing back from its loss to this Florida team on Tuesday to upset Arkansas in overtime like Florida did on Saturday last week with Jody Jr., Joe Davis. Mississippi State has won the other overtime game in the SEC today. That means Texas A&M now has a loss in SEC play. Florida is all alone at the top of the SEC through with a couple of weeks. Arkansas still struggling to win on the road. They've lost big at Texas A&M, an overtime heartbreaker today at Georgia. That's going to be the key for the Razorbacks if they want to make a postseason run. Find a way to win road games. A.T. Harrell, Dixon Tatum, fighting for the rebound. And saving it to Wilbekin, who lets the run with the Gators. Here's Casey Hill. Bounce into traffic for you get. Scrappy job by Samson almost to come off with a steal. And then Harold does and gets fouled by Finney Smith. Take a look at our Sonic showdown now. Keys for these two teams, show. Yeah, Florida needs to minimize either Harold or Denson. Those two guys average 38 a game. And they need to dominate the paint inside, rebounding and scoring. Auburn, they've got a defensive board. Rebound on the defensive end of the floor. And all five starters for the Auburn Tigers need to bring their A game today because they don't have a lot of depth. And to upset a talented team like Florida, the Auburn starters have got to produce the points and the rebounds. Able to break the press easily this time. That's what gave Georgia such a hard time on Tuesday. Day down at the O Dome. Florida pressed that entire game and held the Bulldogs to a season low 50 points. Off of the hands of Attaway. An Auburn turnover. Fraser gets rejected but fouled. Attaway got the block, but I believe they're going to get Thompson for the foul. They do get the freshman for his first. Always looking to take the ball on the deck to the basket. Casey Prather, he's a slasher, gets to the foul line a lot. Good job by Attaway coming across and blocking the shot. But Alex Thompson, the 6'8 freshman from Dauphin, a, a brand new scholarship award recipient, former walk-on, committed the foul. Prather, 6'6", 210 senior out of Jackson, Tennessee. We talked about it a little bit earlier. But over his first three seasons, averaged three points a game. And now as a senior leading the team with 17 to contact. It's a great story, Joe. Those were his 87th and 88th free throw attempts this year. That leads the Florida team, which tells you he's aggressive with the ball, taking it to the basket, and drawing fouls. He's a 71% foul shooter, but the most improved player in this league by far. He hasn't even attempted a three since November. Foul number four goes on to Von Walker. It's his first. And the fourth on the Gators in this first half. Auburn losing on Wednesday at Tennessee, but they've been right there in all three SEC losses so far. A turnover off of the inbound, and here comes Hill with Prather. Well, the defense leads to the offense. The steal by Hill, the pass ahead, the two-on-one break executed beautifully for the easy jam by the Florida Gators textbook Billy Donovan basketball. First game for Prather in a week and a half. We asked Billy Donovan this morning what he expected from him. He said zero expectations. Knew they had enough balance where if he wasn't good, they'd be fine without him. But he's got nine of Florida's 12 as the Gators try to get their ninth consecutive win and try to get off to a 4-0 start in SEC play to sit alone at the top of the SEC standings. Back here in Auburn, where the Tigers trying to snap a 13-game SEC losing streak, and Casey Prather, after missing two games of the bruised knee, has seven quick points. Yeah, off the bench, uh, he looks healthy today. Three for three from the field, and I asked Billy Donovan this morning, what's been the difference from last year, six points a game, to this year, 17 points a game? 
He just said, Joe, he's worked extremely hard to improve his play, but the mental aspect of Casey Prather's approach to the game has been 100% better this year, more confident in himself, and it shows this senior out of Jackson, Tennessee. Gators have been able to overcome his injury and several other injuries with oh. the depth, with the experience. Wilbekin hangs in the lane and knocks it down. He's one of those four seniors. Had a season-low seven on Tuesday, but had five assists and didn't turn it over. Attaway gets fouled in the shoot, too. The Auburn coaches really like Matthew Attaway, 6'9", 250-pound freshman from Canada. You see him running the floor, nice catch. On the move, good catch to gather himself and go up for the shot. Draws the foul from Patrick Young. That's a couple of large men right yeah. there banging into one another under the basket. 6'9", 240 against 6'9", 250. Attaway just 7 of 13 from the line this year. And again, free throws have been an issue for Auburn. Last two games, getting outscored at the free throw line, 54 to 23. Part of that is that they're not getting there. Right. Only LSU shoots fewer free throws than the SEC. But part of that, too, is that for whatever reason, since SEC play has began, they're not shooting it well. They were 71% in the non-conference from the line since SEC started, only 60% in their three SEC losses. That's got to change today if Auburn wants to have a chance against Florida. A little bit of pressure from the Tigers off of that made free throw. And Auburn has switched to a 2-3 zone out of the timeout. Gave up the easy shot to Wilberton on the first possession. Good box out from Prather, and then he got fouled by Chris Denson. Well, the most storied conference in college athletics. We'll live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home of the SEC Network, launching August of 2014. For more information, go to GetSECNetwork.com. Foul on Denson was his first. The third Auburn foul. Here's Prather with Rome. Hill with the extra pass to Frazier. SEC's top three-point shooter passed up an open look. And Prather for two more with a foul. Wow. What a play. What a play for this small forward at six foot six. Watch Prather move without the basketball. Sliding down the lane. He's against the 6'11 player right there. Jumps over the seven-footer Dixon Tatum and shoots the jump hook right in the basket. And Casey Prather is four for four here in the first half off the bench. Florida's on an 8-1 run to take its largest lead of this first half. Malcolm Canada's into the game. The backup point guard gets fouled by Frazier. Frazier's first in the sixth on Florida. Coaches are really trying to decide this year how they're going to defend with the new hand-checking emphasis by the officials. Cannot touch players anymore. Touch fouls are now being called. So Florida, you see right here, starts their defense at the three-point line, playing more containment here in the half court. The rules haven't affected them too much. Nope. Top defensive team in the SEC, top 10 of the country. A.T. Harrell a little bit too strong with a jumper, and it's Prather with the rebound. Florida totally controlling their defensive backboards. No offensive rebounds by the Tigers so far. Young gets fouled. Auburn, Florida, Joe, is not a great scoring team inside, but they still take the ball down there. Why do they do that? They want the defense to come off of the perimeter players, collapse, have to double team. Patrick Young, will you get? They posted up Casey Prather the time before, and by going inside, it allows you to play inside out and create more opportunities on the perimeter for the shooters like Casey Hill and, of course, the great Michael Frazier, the top three-point shooter in the league. Patrick Young, just a 56% foul shooter. You know, that was one spot where Florida struggled on Tuesday, went just 11 of 20 against Georgia. The Gators have hit four of their first five free throws today. Auburn hasn't missed a three. They've not hit a two. Attaway the gets doubled. Yep. Good job by Prather. 
And Attaway nearly turns it over, but it finds Harrell. That's a bad pass. Prather's on it on. And Prather will get fouled and shoot two more. Welcome Canada called for his first foul. And the sixth on Auburn. There's an example of the defense by the Florida Gators as we look at Casey Prather, who has just been unbelievable. Nice jump hook there on the post up. Facing jump shot by Prather. And now he goes to the foul line for his 11th point of the game off the bench. A young man who has not played in the last two games with a knee bruise. He looks 100% today. Senior out of Northside High School, Jackson, Tennessee, right outside Memphis. Florida with four outstanding seniors on this team, which is very unusual today in college basketball that you have four seniors who are all significant players on a team that's now ranked in the top ten. Yeah, they've all been to three Elite Eights, won two SEC titles. Taj Shamsuddin back into the game quickly after Canada came in for a couple of minutes. And you know what the goal is of this senior class. These guys want to make it to Dallas. They want to play in Jerry World the first weekend of April. Denson, good quick first step. But missed it off the back iron and got his own miss before losing it out of bounds. First offensive rebound for the Auburn Tigers. Nice job of pounding the board. Tony Barbie likes this team. He said they never quit. They have great chemistry and play well together. Staying in the zone defense. Florida takes it inside. Chamsadeen got his hand on it, knocked it at a bounds. With the shot clock at 19, here comes Yaget, and here comes Jacob Kurtz into the game for Florida. As Prather sits down with Young. Jacob Kurtz, number 30, the kid who just came in right there, is from Orlando Haggerty High School, coached by Josh Cohn there at that high school. And if that name rings a bell, Josh Cohn's dad, Steve Cohn, was the high school coach at Lake Howell in Orlando who coached Chandler Parsons and Nick Calathis. Auburn can't make a two. And you get pulls it away. The Tigers have hit all three threes, but have missed all eight shots from inside the arc. Great control. I love the control by the Gators. They push it quickly. They look for fast break opportunities. If it's not, not there, they don't play out of control. They set up and run their offense. Frazier traveled. And Auburn will take it. Michael Frazier, the top three-point shooter. Kurtz there with the great pass. We talk about the great passing ability of the Gators. Continue to rack up the assists and look for the open man. That's why they're such a great team and hard to defend. Jensen. Rebound Frazier. Auburn has gone seven minutes without a field goal. They've gone the entire game without hitting the two. Kurtz kicks. Wilbick in the extra pass for a Fraser air ball. Top SEC three-point shooter started one of eight last week before naming his last four from outside. And again, he was six for seven in this arena last year as Florida won easily here. You asked him today during the shoot on You like it here, don't you? He <laughs> said without hesitation, yes, I do. Absolutely. He loves this gym. Look at the hedge by you get. Jensen, a tough take would go. And finally, a shot from inside the arc falls, and it's from Alex Thompson. You get was guarding Alex Thompson. He left Thompson to come and help on the ball screen, and that left Thompson wide open to the offensive backboard for the tip-in. First field goal for the Tigers in seven and a half minutes. <laughs> Frazier for three. Short. Rebound Attaway. Shamsuddin tried to fire it over to Harrell, but he got back. 
Here onto the floor to save it. And Chancedine finally comes out with it. Denson. Rebound you get. And a foul called on Auburn. It goes on Matthew Attaway. It's his first. Break 22 is coming up for affiliates. That's a seventh Auburn foul. They trail by 11 here in the first half. Well, Florida's defense best in the SEC and so far in this game, holding Auburn to 26% in the field. Yeah, when two offensive players come together, they converge and double-team and force turnovers. That time, just the steal on the inbounds pass led to the dunk at the other end off the Casey Hill assist and Prather. Prather, of course, number 24. Healthy today, 12 points off the bench. He's 4 for 4 from the field and 4 or 5 at the foul line. And I'll tell you, he has really given the Gators a spark here today on the road. They won at Arkansas last week without him, which was very impressive. But today, he's come to play and uh, happy to be back in the blue and orange. This time with a bruised knee. You get at the foul line for a 1-1 one and one in the seventh Auburn foul of the half. Let's see what Auburn can do offensively. They're three of three from outside, but one of 12 from two. And that's the ninth Auburn turnover. That went totally unforced. Florida's defense good, but turnovers like that have yeah. nothing to do with Yeah, defense. That, that was simply an unforced error. Alan Payne simply dropped the basketball. And Florida's in position to make the steal. Notice how they go inside, I tell you. They take it in there all the time. That's the way you should run offense. Run your offense through your bigs inside. Even if they can't score down there, it flattens the defense and opens up other things out on the perimeter. Alan Payne forces one off the end. Alan Payne is the X factor for Auburn. A senior young man who has a lot of ability. He's an undersized power forward, but a guy who can make plays for the Tigers. Devon Walker with the ball now, his first minutes of this game. Walker really good from the corner. With the shot clock winding down. Prather spinning inside and landed in to beat the shot clock. I'm going to tell you, he's unbelievable today. Casey Prather. I mean, he's the whirling dervish in there, spinning, laying the ball over the big people, drawing fouls. This is the Casey Prather show here for the Gators in the first half. 14 of the 27 Florida points have been from Casey Prather. He's playing his first game in a week and a half. Shamsit Dean. Tough little guy from Decatur, Georgia. Nice penetration into the heart of the defense. And then the ability to shoot the little runner into the basket. Walker. You get with Wade this time at his jump and then picking up a foul. First down Wade, eighth down Auburn, so one and one coming. Watch the spin move by Prather here against the zone. Split the defenders. And then the finger roll right over the big guy inside over Attaway. There's the spin. Attaway late getting there. And Prather with the easy basket. Number zero, Hassan Nixon Tatum. Will you get the line? Shooting one and one. You got just missed the front end of a one and one in the previous Florida possession. And does the same here. Struggles at the foul line. Not an offensive player. He's a guy that goes and gets offensive rebounds. He defends, blocks shots. He's consummate kind of the glue player on the Florida team. Will you get? Only guy that started all 17 games for Billy Donovan's team. Harold trying to find room for a shot, but good defense from Walker. Dixon Tatum screening for Shem Tadeen. The kick ball reset the clock to 15 seconds. With 3.36 left to go in this first half, Florida trying to win its ninth straight. Dari No K in studio coming up on the C Spire halftime report. Barry Booker will join us. We'll show you how Kentucky took control late against Tennessee. 
how overtimes were almost the norm in the SEC on this Saturday. And some top 25 action. Number 12 goes down. I'll tell you who that is at halftime, guys. All right, Dari. Auburn trailing Florida here at Auburn Arena as we take a look at today's Wendy's Wood and Watch. You like Tennessee and you like Jordan McRae. I do like Jordan McRae. He's a senior, six foot six, that can put the ball on the floor. He's a tremendous shooter, 36% from three. Good foul shooter. He rebounds, passes the ball, one of the top scorers in the SEC, and certainly uh, very deserving as a candidate for the Wooden Award. At 17 and a close loss at Kentucky today. The Harrison Twins today for Kentucky with 40 points combined. Best scoring output by those guys this season. Harrell knocks down a three, and Auburn has hit all four from outside today. Fraser tried to dump it off for Young. He's knocked out of bounds. Stays on this end. Frazier left his feet there, had nowhere to go with the ball. Young was not open. The Gators got a break right there when Auburn knocked it out of bounds. You got to stay on the floor when you drive to the lane. You leave your feet and you have nowhere to throw the basketball, you're in trouble. Young against the freshman Attaway with Hero helping. Hill for three. The foul on the rebound goes on Patrick Young, his second. And the seventh. On Florida, as we take a look at our Toyota SEC leaders, Auburn has two of the top three scores in the SEC. And it's why Auburn uh, is a tough out, and it gives them an opportunity to win some games in this league this year because they have two guys they can count on for big numbers. The key for the Tigers is cutting down on their turnovers. They've already got nine in the game here this afternoon and finding a third score who might be, you know, Sham Sedin, maybe Alan Payne. Hassan Dixon Tatum, the seven foot center, really is not much of a threat inside. Attaway earns his second free throw. So Auburn has cut it to seven. And seven and a half minutes in this half without a field goal. But now scored seven straight. I like Attaway, Joe. First time we've seen him. And we were told by the coaches this morning that. They like his upside. He's a big body guy that plays hard. Good focus by Attaway. And he's getting the minutes this afternoon over Dixon Tatum, the senior. He's pray for that is back to the bucket. Over Denson. And able to keep the play alive momentarily, but it's Payne. And Payne inside will shoot two free throws. The Auburn crowd is on their feet because of the defensive effort that led to this play right here by Alan Payne. The hustle on the defensive end, the defensive rebound that led to the transition opportunity for the Tigers and Alan Payne with the left-handed free throw. It's interesting, Auburn has three starters that are left-handed. Chris Denson, Alan Payne, and Taj Shamsuddin are all left-handed players. You don't see that very often. Payne makes both. And Auburn is within four. They're out of the zone now. Full court man. Back to the half court man to man by the Auburn Tigers. They've got momentum right now and the crowd is in the game. And now a travel. And Auburn with all the momentum right now. This crowd starting to get into the game. Well, the student section behind us has been tremendous from the first day they opened this arena. David, uh, David Housel, the former athletic director, Jay Jacobs, the current Auburn athletic director, had the vision to create an entryway only for the students, their own concessions and restrooms here, and the Auburn student body has shown their appreciation. And Denson knocks down a three. Steal for pain, and then he's fouled.
Brayther gets called the ninth Florida foul of this down. And now Payne goes to the line with a chance to give Auburn the lead. Well, you do it with your defense. And the offensive three-point shot by Chris Denson, the SEC's leading scorer. That's the second three of the game for him, and he came in with only eight on the season. But Chris Denson improving his outside shooting and making some big threes for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn has made all five threes that they've shot today. That's amazing. Auburn can cut down turnovers and rebound the ball better. They're going to give Florida a run here this afternoon. Scored 14 straight and leads by one. Wilbekin got fouled. But he got bailed out on that call. Bailed out his right, and I thought he might have traveled. When he got into the lane, he stumbled a bit, and when the whistle blew, I was anticipating a traveling call. That's a break for Billy Donovan's Gators. Here it is. There's the stumble right there. And of course, Alan Payne wanted to travel. Didn't get it. Oh. Wilbekin earns the second. Scotty Wilbekin, a senior from Gainesville was, in my opinion, last year's most improved player in the SEC. This year, it's, that distinction, I think, goes to Casey Prather, his teammate. So, Wilbekin makes both, and Florida's back in front, snapping a 14-0 Auburn run. Darrell drives, and the foul! KT Harrell is a guy that has strength. Besides being a three-point threat, when they come at him, he can go by the defender, and he's got the strength to get the contact and make the shot right there. Great upper body strength, great contact, and makes the three-point play. Attaway. Underneath the Prather, who's been quiet over the last couple of minutes, but now has 16 of Florida's 31 and a tie game inside of a minute in this, sec this first half. He is a natural small forward, but he can go inside, ball fake, and use his athletic ability to jump up and dunk balls around the rim. Casey Prather has been incredible this afternoon. It's the first field goal for Florida in four minutes. Hero gets bumped by Hill. That's his second. And into the double bonus, so two Auburn free throws coming up. Watch him move without the basketball. Prather goes down to the baseline, finds the pass, the ball fake, and then up and into the basket. Quickness, explosiveness. Casey Prather, senior out of Jackson, Tennessee. The Auburn Tigers have been incredible from three-point range. Chris Denson, the leading scorer in the SEC, has made two threes. KT Harrell knocked down one from the left corner and from the right corner. All over the floor, there's Denson again. Soft shot. Made all five threes in this game. They're not a great three-point shooting team. Bump in the SEC hitting 32% from outside. A lot of times to pull an upset, that's one of the ingredients you've got to have. You've got to be good from downtown. Well, that's a great point, Joe. I think to 
you're a team that maybe has the inferior talent. Uh, who, most people would think that's the case between Florida and Auburn. You got to make outside shots. And that's the great equalizer, those three-point baskets that Auburn has made five of those here in the first half. And that's why they are ahead in this game. KT Harrell has made both his free throws. Auburn is 9 of 10 from the stripe in this first half. <laughs> One of two. That's you, typically how it works. You right? do it every time. I jinxed down uh, Brent Williams in South Carolina last you year. Did. He made like 50 in a row. Right. You called him out and he missed right away. I'm not going to let you do that anymore. <laughs> Florida can have the final shot. They want it. Denson, good defense on Wilbekin. Plumped down to six. Yaget comes to screen. Wilbekin charges inside and a foul called on Auburn. They're going to say that Shamsadeen stepped in with three seconds. First foul on Shamsadeen. The tenth on Auburn, so Wilbekin's going to get two shots here. This is a tough break for Tony Barbie's team. Shamsadeen looks like he's in position kind of slides to his right just a little bit and that's where the block came it's a tough break for Auburn a break for the Gators <laughs> Scotty Wilbekin has been solid this afternoon running the show for the Florida offense gives good leadership to the freshman Casey Hill Billy Donovan plays two point guards and that's why they're such an efficient offensive team. They've got very good ball handlers and good passers. 18-6 Auburn run. Florida will pressure the inbound with three seconds. Prather looked like probably should have gotten called for the foul. Instead, Kurtz traveled with point three, which is only enough time for a tip in. Billy Donovan Jr. is on the floor right now. Number 42 for the Gators. So Auburn finishes the half on an 18-6 run, but Casey Prather with half of the Florida points in his first game in a week and a half. Now we send it to Dari Nelka, Barry Booker in the SUC TV studio for the C Spire Halftime Report. <laughs> Okay, I'm in the blue, Joe Dean is in the red. Watch yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> in your dreams, buddy. Yeah. Not really, not really. <laughs> Welcome back courtside with Auburn. Madeline back into that game, Joe Dean Jr., Joe Davis. It had uh, been built up to a 13-point Florida lead at the 848 mark, but then an 18-6 run for Auburn, and they're right back in. A really impressive work right there by the Tigers. Great comeback by Auburn. If you're Florida, you have to be concerned. You shot 61% in the first half, and you only have a one-point lead. That's because the Auburn Tigers were 5 for 5 from three-point range. But Casey Prather, what a first-half performance. 16 points, three rebounds, mostly in the lane. He only has one three-point basket the entire season. He does it with jump hooks over seven footers like he did right there and an assortment of shots have given him a tremendous first half the Auburn Tigers have just worn it out from the arc Chris Denson and KT Harrell have made the three-point shots Chris Denson the senior plays a little string music down on the plains in Auburn Alabama Take a look at our Papa John's first half stats now. They did miss from outside, and there was a while there where they weren't missing from outside. They weren't hitting anything from inside the arc, but down the stretch there, after a four for 15 start from the field for the Tigers, they hit four of their final five shots. Within one as his second half begins in a building where they're eight and two this season, trying to snap a 13-game conference losing streak and trying to snap Florida's eight-game winning streak. Uh, Florida has started the second half in a 1-3-1 half-court zone trap. We've seen Florida run this periodically throughout the season. They're going to look to disrupt the half-court offense by Auburn. Alan Kane misses from point blank, but Dixon Tatum had a second chance. He missed from point blank as well. That's kind of how the first half yeah. began. For Tony, Tony Barbie wanted a foul inside on Dixon Tatum, and now he's upset about the touch foul against his seven-foot center on Patrick Young right there. Who just picked up his third of the first foul of the second half. 
He's, he's basically telling the officials, call them both ways. My guy got fouled down here. You called it against him on the other end. Should have been made in the first place, though, by Payne. Who, by the way, did have nine in that first half as Auburn searches for a third scoring threat. Outside of two of the top three scorers in the ICC, KT Harrell and Chris Jensen. Here's Patrick Young. The kick to Will McKinn for three. Oh, what a big shot. They always take it inside. The Gators go inside. They attack inside out. Patrick Young drew the defense, kicked it out to a wide open Wilberton. Senior to senior for the three-point shot. Four seniors in this group for Florida. Denson with a drive and the foul. And Patrick Young just picked up foul number three. Well, you wouldn't think that the leading scorer in the SEC had only made eight three-point baskets on the season because Chris Denson scores like that. He's a slasher driving to the basket and getting to the free throw line has been the MO this year for the uh, less SEC's leading score at 19.4 a game. Denson has been to the line now 130 times on the season. That is a lot. The issue is that he's not been good there, especially right. in SEC play, shooting 44% from the stripe. What a drop step from Young. Great body control to finish in a foul. Alan Payne called for his second, second Auburn foul of the half. And again, can't emphasize enough, the Gators starting their offense on the low box. Great spin move by Patrick Young. Right here, right around the freshman, Attaway. That's a mismatch, senior on freshman, and the potential three-point play. Bain tracks down the rebound. Of course, rebounding a big issue for Auburn so far in SEC play. They've been out-rebounded by 30 over the last two games. Losses to Missouri and Tennessee. But right there, out rebounded by only two during the first half. They've got a big guy on the on the point of the 1-3-1. That's Casey Prather. He's 6'6. Six, six. They've got you get it 6'7. Michael Frazier at 6'5 on the wings. They want to shut down the Auburn shooters that hurt them so much in the first half. Scotty Wilbekin is on the baseline. His responsibility in this defense is to cover corner to corner. Well, Wilbekin the point guard. So they put the point guard under the bucket. Kicked and reset it to 15. Auburn is 0 3 in the SEC, but close losses. 16 points total in those three defeats. They lost by 11 at Tennessee on Wednesday. Lost here against Missouri last Saturday by three. And prior to that, opened the conference slate with a two point loss at Ole Miss. Just got to get over the hump. Denson gets double teamed. With five to shoot, Hero finds Payne, who got rejected by a get. <laughs> Young screening for Wilberkin. He got fouled by Shamsid Dean. It's his second, the third Auburn foul of this half. Florida so mature in their offensive approach, playing under control. And then on the defensive end, the block shot by Will you get right there against Alan Payne leads to the fast break opportunity at the other end. But on the offensive end, the veteran team plays under control and attacks going inside first. Young couldn't hit on the hook shot. Here comes Auburn. 1-3-1 one, one, giving him some issues. Hero for three. Auburn has not missed from outside. Six of six from downtown and back to a one-point game. Prather with a reverse. Boy, has this kid been impressive after missing back-to-back -back games with a knee injury. Lead it all scores now. Attacked the big man Attaway and then went under the goal and used the rim to protect against the shot block. 18 for Prather. Denson in traffic. Out to Shamsuddin. Harold takes Prather. They call for the offensive foul. You get Drew. Doing it all over the place on the defensive end. 
against the 1 3 1 zone. Auburn penetrates and kicks it out for KT Harrell out of Jeff Davis High School, Montgomery, Alabama, who knocks down the big three. His teammates on the bench, they like it. You wanted to do a little string music, but it was too much rim there. That's true. Right? Yeah. It's got to hit nothing exactly. but the bottom of the sack, Joe Davis. You're learning. I am learning. <laughs> Bain gives Wilbick in space, but he likes to drive and has it knocked off his knee. Now, Florida normally pretty good at taking care of the ball with this veteran-laden team, but they turned it over nine times in the first half. And that was the tenth turnover by the Gators. That's uncharacteristic of a Billy Donovan team. Normally a very good ball handling and passing team. A little bit off their game here this afternoon. A lot to do with the intensity level of the Auburn Tigers. Denson. In the double figures. Tony Barbie's got him back in a 2-3 zone. They played that most of the first half, and it was effective in the Auburn comeback. Patrick Young can't hit. Prather with the offensive rebound, and he's fouled going off for the shot. Today's game is brought to you by Puerto Rico Tourism Company. Live your own star vacation story. Puerto Rico, the all-star island. Visit cpuertorico.com. Alan Payne whistled for his third foul. And Casey Prather to describe the two shots. Casey Prather leads the Gators in scoring this year at 17 a game. He's made one three-point basket on the season. He is not an outside shooter. He is a slasher. He's a guy that gets offensive rebounds and gets to the foul line. As I mentioned before, he has been to the foul line a number of times, almost 90 times this year. Very effective using his athletic ability around the basket. One of two. He's got 19 in the afternoon. Florida back to a two-point lead. Denson going baseline into a crowd. That ball trickles out to Shamsuddin with eight to shoot. Denson will fire. In and out. First Auburn miss from three. Nearly went. Now Hill with his eyes up. Got fouled. There should be a foul. Absolutely. Shamsuddin grabbed him as he went by on the arm. And it will be a foul. Florida clinging to a two-point lead here in Auburn. Gus Malzahn drawing uh, some of the biggest cheers of the day. As he was shown on the video board here at Auburn Arena. Talking to a recruit right there. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Young is one of the smartest defensive big men in the league. Watch the help on the drive. Great seal down on the baseline to uh, prevent the pass across the lane. And on the shot, watch him go and block his man out. Great effort. His man didn't get the rebound, which allowed Casey Hill the opportunity to get that tilt at the uh, carom and take it the other way and get to the foul line. Great camera work by Daniel Edwards there. Patrick Young. Four-year contributor, three-year starter, and as nice of a kid, as good of an ambassador of any program as yeah. you'll find. He has a wide range of interests. Does Patrick Young? He was singing in his school choir in high school. Very good student. Has an interest in broadcasting. Dorian Finney-Smith, who's been quiet, hasn't played a ton, has knocked down both field goals today that he's taken. Three and now a two. When Prather was hurt in the game at Arkansas, Dorian Finney-Smith, the sophomore, came in and scored 21, actually 22, and had 15 rebounds. Quite a performance for the transfer from Virginia Tech. Michael Frazier called for his second foul. Second quarter foul of the second half. Frazier's yet to score in this game. One game after a career-high 21. Yeah. Auburn defense has contained him today and keyed on him. Wilbekin, good feet to stay with Denson. He gets fouled. Wilbekin can't believe it. Next Saturday, you and I will be there, Joe, Georgia, at Kentucky, along with this slate, the rest of the day on SEC TV.
How about Georgia's win today at home against Arkansas? I tell you, Georgia's had some big wins. The win at Missouri to start SEC play was very impressive for Mark Fox's team. And then the overtime win today against a very good Arkansas team. We'll enjoy seeing them at Rupp Arena next Saturday. Billy Donovan takes a timeout with his team on three. Chilly but nice day here in Auburn, Alabama. Plainsman Park and then Jordan Hare Stadium, site of one of the greatest college football games ever this fall. Which one was that? Mm. Would that be the Iron Bowl? That'd be the Iron Bowl. Sonny Galloway, yeah. head coach of the baseball program, came over from Oklahoma. Right. Great reputation as an elite college baseball coach, Sonny Galloway. Got a lot to work with here on this Auburn campus, Plainsman Park, a beautiful facility. Trying to get that program back to the College World Series where they've been a number of times. Benson off the back iron. Florida shooting 63% in this game, but up just three, largely because they've turned it over 10 times. That's exactly right. And they've allowed Auburn to make a lot of three-point shots. Which has got to concern Billy Donovan, and I'm sure that one reason why he went to that 1-3-1 one -one zone to start the second half to try to shut down those shots on the wing by Harrell and Denson. Devon Walker with a wide open look that won't go, and Malcolm Canada, the backup point guard, in there with the taller bodies for the board. Denson streaks inside and gets blocked by Young. Patrick Young is such a presence on the defensive end at 6'9 and 250. Watch him leave his man, come across and get the nice rejection. The only thing he could have done better is keep that ball in play. Denson dribbles baseline. Thompson there for the rebound, but had it tipped away by his teammate Attaway. A couple of freshmen had their hands on it, but battled for it, neither got it. Wilbekin tries a three and knocks it down. Wow, what a tremendous shot by Wilbekin, the senior. Three point shooting is up this year, 38%. He's made a couple of big ones here in the second half. And now Tony Barbie will take a timeout as Florida has opened the lead to six, largest that it's been since the first half. And Scotty Wilbekin, not a great three-point shooter overall, but like you said, has gotten better. Yeah, gets a good screen by Patrick Young and knocks down the shot. That'll lead us to our Dean's list, the five best shooters in the SEC. We're looking at two of them today. Michael Frazier, who hasn't scored a point this afternoon. KT Harrell from Auburn, of course. Rod Odom at Vanderbilt has been incredible. Marshall Henderson, we all know the phenomenal streak that he has from the outside and a great three-point threat. And then Jabari Brown at 42% for the Missouri Tigers. Our Dean's list, five best shooters in the SEC. And of course, I could say that Trevor Relliford at Alabama could be a part of that group as well. He's having an MVP type season. Scotty Wilbekin is into double figures for that three. One game after he had a season low seven against Georgia, but in that game, quietly five assists, no turnovers. Florida's guards, ten assists, no turnovers. Out of the timeout, Florida to the two three zone. One three one to start the second half. They got out of that, went man, and now to the two three. We'll see how Auburn attacks it. Dane settles in the middle of that zone, but they couldn't find him. So the shot clock winds inside of 10. Hero got loose with the dribble. Now a step back. Way short. And Florida with an excellent defensive possession. Here's Hill getting fouled. Seems like a bailout call. Now yeah, watch Patrick Young again defensively in the middle of that zone. That gets behind Watt, helps on the drive, gets back and covers Dixon Tatum inside, blocks him out. He doesn't get the rebound, but his man doesn't either. And that's what smart centers do inside. Casey Hill gets his first point. Freshman out of Montverde Academy, same place that uh, Michael Frazier, the three-point shooter, 
played his high school basketball. Donald's All-American that's going to have a really nice future. Here. Yeah, fourth in the SEC in assists. More of a playmaker, ball handler, and defender. He's not a great score right now. That will improve with age and experience in this Florida program for Casey Hill. Champ City in lobs. And it's thrown down by Denson. Boy, he climbed the ladder to grab that one. Wilbekin turns it over. The crowd back into it after the Denson slam. Shamsuddin had an open look instead of two. Good position over the seven footer Dixon Tatum. How do you silence the crowd? You play a little string music, Joe Davis, in Florida. Couldn't get it going outside, so they go to their senior post presence inside, Patrick Young, who delivers with the jump hook. It is in double figures for a sixth consecutive game now. KT Hill off balance draws the foul and will shoot two. Auburn trying to snap a 13-game SEC losing streak, playing the number six. Against the, the zone. Here's the live Auburn Chris Denson with a little Duffarino as the Tigers on the on the move. Chris Denson is 6-2, looking to fly here on the alley oop. Well, incredible. <laughs> what a great shot. Looking, almost looking inside the basket. This has got to be a sports center top 10 play, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Denson, six foot two, out of Columbus Shaw High School in Georgia, about 30 miles from here. Denson in Shoot double two. figures, part of the SEC's top scoring duel with a guy at the line, KT Harrell. Okay, just when it looked like Florida was about to maybe pull away, Auburn has stemmed the tide and. Back to within two possessions. JT Harrell from nearby Montgomery, M Montgomery, Alabama. Jeff Davis High School played for a legendary coach there, Terry Posey. Some pressure from Auburn. Florida breaks it brilliantly, and Young will shoot two. Well, the most story conference in college athletics to live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home. The SEC Network launching August of 2014. For more information, go to GetSECNetwork.com. Hassan Dixon Tatum just picked up his fourth foul for Auburn. The eighth Auburn foul already in this second half. Patrick Young has struggled with foul shooting his entire career at Florida. He's 56% this season. Sometimes it's troublesome for the Gators because at his size and strength, he gets fouled quite a bit around the basket. There you go. One of two for Young. There's three of five from the line today and has 11. Here comes the 1-3-1 one, one half-court zone. This is when Auburn struggled the most. Exactly. Prather up top. He'll make it hard to reverse the ball. You get comes up with his sixth steal of the game. Both teams zoning, Auburn's the 2-3. Florida wants to take it inside first. Finney Smith with an air ball and off of the hands of Prather. Great ball movement that time. Dorian Finney Smith, who's shot the ball well for the Gators of late. Couldn't get that one to go. Had a little tailwind on that shot, I think. Something. See that 1-3-1 one, one zone right there, extended out. Trying to keep the ball above the free throw line, extended. The length out front, and the point guard will be playing under the bucket. Champs Sedin rifles one for Payne. Now that's the drop. 
that will you get has to make. He was late on his drop from the weak side wing, and that opened up Denson for the wide open layup. Crayford drives. Wilbur can result in for a moment. A 2 3 closed out. Wilbekin, a fadeaway, in and out, Young fights for the rebound, a whistle and a foul on the floor. Well, that's what you call a 50-50 ball. It came off the backboard, and that guy right there, Hadaway at 6'9", 250, battled Patrick Young at 6'9", 260. Yeah, not that much. Maybe 225 is Patrick Young. But Patrick Young wanted it a little more, wrestled it away, and drew the foul. Sham Sabine got his third foul. Nine Auburn fouls already. So after this, Florida will shoot two free throws the rest of the way. One and one here. Young off the back iron. Denson with a rebound. Auburn can tie it with a three. Out of the 1-3-1, back to the 2-3. Top defensive team in the SEC, top 10 in the country, holding teams under 60 points a game. Payne trying to dribble through a double, and it's stolen away. Hero for the tie. Okay, that was a great pass cross court by Sham Sedin to find KT Harrell, the three point shooter. Just couldn't get it to go. Auburn hit its first six threes of the day. They've missed the last two. Don't give Finney Smith that much space. Capable outside shooter. Clock inside of 10. You get with a spin move. An air ball. Shot clock never reset. Doesn't matter. Well, Florida wants to take it in, but you get is not the offensive threat that Patrick Young is and threw up a spin move air ball to the dismay of his coach. Florida four seniors who are just outstanding. As you mentioned, Joe, these four young men have been to the Elite Eight three straight seasons and have their eye on the Final Four this year, but right now they've got their hands full with the Auburn Tigers. Last trip to the Final Four for Florida was 2007. Last win in SEC play for Auburn was last year. 13 consecutive defeats in conference play, trying to snap it against number seven. Auburn has played everybody tough in the league so far this year. Hero working on Wilbekin with the shot clock winding down. Shin City going baseline. Help comes. Denson gets fouled. And he'll have a chance to tie the game at the strike. It's Michael Frazier whistled for his third. Well, it was a touch foul, and Michael Frazier didn't like it. But unfortunately for him, the officials are instructed this year to call touch fouls. There's the little body. Wasn't much. Just enough to get Chris Denson to the free throw line. Denson now two of four from the line today, under 50% during SEC play from the strike, which is never something you want to hear, but especially from a guy that shoots way more free throws than anybody else on your team. And he comes into the game only a 61% foul shooter, so today he's got his good shooting eye here in Auburn Arena. Numbers in Proved all four years for him, having by far his best season. Two of three. And a rebound for Casey Prefer. Mm -hmm. 
Trini Smith attacks and kicks. It will become passing up an open look. Yeah, I'm surprised at that, Joe. He's made two big ones in the second half. Should have his confidence. Hill into the lane. I think that shot got altered, but an offensive rebound from Finney Smith. You get follow wouldn't go. Shot clock still hasn't reset, and now a foul with two to shoot. It goes on Malcolm Canada, his third. What a good one we got going at Auburn. This game by 13 at the 848 mark of the first half. Auburn closed that half on an 18-6 run, and they've been right there in the second half. Florida has five players that average in double figures on the season, and three of them in double figures this afternoon. As well, you get those to the line for two shots. And I think part of the reason that Auburn is in this game is the defense on Michael Frazier, who has zero points today. A year ago, when Florida came in here and won by 30, he had 18 points from the three-point line. Auburn's defense has been very impressive this afternoon. You get who's not a great free-throw shooter makes both. But back to a three-point lead for Billy Donovan's team as he gets ready to send Michael Frazier back into the game. you got to have Frazier in. He's such a three-point threat. He attracts a lot of attention defensively, which opens up other people. Hill will shoot two. Uh, Tony Barbie said that sometimes he's got to tell KT Hill to be more assertive about the offensive end, that he gets more satisfaction out of finding open teammates for buckets. Right there, he held onto the ball for 20 seconds, got inside, and got fouled. And there's no question that he is the, the biggest threat offensively for Auburn because he can shoot the three, but he, and he's also quick enough and physically strong enough to drive it into the lane and make plays and get fouled, which he did right there. Second best free throw shooter in the SEC on the season. Four of six today. Mm. This has been Auburn's issue. The best free throw shooting team in the SEC during non-conference play. The worst in the three plus conference games. Dorian Finney Smith able to bank it in. Really smart play that time. Smith was a trailer and he caught it, just saw a wide open lane ahead of him and took it right down to the backboard and got it in. First Florida field goal in five minutes. Harold had knocked out of bounds. Here's Taj Shamsuddin back into the game. Canada will sit down. Yeah, watch Dorian Finney Smith right here. He sees that avenue right to the goal, attacks the shot blocker, uses the banking board under control to get the two-point shot. Off of the inbound play, they try to find Harrell. The defense from Florida. Denson in the lane. Wow, he's so good. Chris Denson, the senior from Columbus, Georgia. So good, knifing to the basket, splitting defenders, and using the left-handed runner to get the ball in. The SEC's top scoring duo with Harrell and Denson have combined for 32 of Auburn's 52 today. Here's Young, who's had a good day in the post. Casey Hill working around Champ City. And a foul on the shot. He'll shoot two. Foul well, went on Champ City, and it's his fourth. There's been a drop-off today when Malcolm Canada's been running the point from Taj Shamsuddin. No question about it. Shamsuddin is the guy that runs the show for Auburn. And when he's not in the game, they're just not as effective. He's a penetrator and an excellent dip passer. Dishes the ball out to his teammates. Casey Hill's first miss from the line. He's only a 65% free throw shooter. Florida's ranked 271st nationally free throw shooter. It's a team you say could be a Final Four team, going to have to be better than that category. No question. Down the stretch in games like this, you have to make foul shots, and that could be the Gators' Achilles heel if they don't improve in that area. And decent today, 15 of 23. So here's Malcolm Canada running the point with Shamsuddin on the bench with four fouls. Denson, high off the glass. Young, 
A turnaround. Hooks out, falls. 14 for Patrick Young. Florida responds. Every time Auburn scores, Florida comes down and responds with a big basket, or they get to the foul line. That's the sign of a great team. KT Hero this time. His runner pops out. And Young battles for the board. Florida not shooting it as well in the second half. After shooting 61% in the first 20 minutes. Here's Prather. Drew contact. Didn't get the call, but got the bucket. And Florida's extended the lead back to six inside of five minutes. Prather's been tremendous today. On the dribble. Taking the ball to the basket, using his athletic ability and his jumping ability to score around the hoop. 21 for Casey Prather to lead all scores. Guy that missed back-to-back -back games with an knee injury. Leading score for the Gators on the season. Against the seven-footer, body control, throws it up on the glass, gets the kind roll. Casey Prather today with big numbers. How about a potential finalist for our Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week? Texas A&M went to Knoxville to face Tennessee, their first true road game of the season. Antoine Space knocks down a three with four and a half seconds left to give A&M a 57-56 win that ended a Tennessee four-game winning streak. Kept Texas A&M perfect in conference play. Log on to CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance. The Texas A&M falling in overtime in Mississippi State today. Probably the most surprising victory of the early part of this SEC season, as you see Antoine Space, the transfer from Florida State, knocking down the three, but for the Aggies to go into Knoxville and beat a Tennessee team who had won the game before in Baton Rouge by 18 was much surprising to many people. Hero launches and knocks down a big three. Canada with a hand check. Can't put your hands on a dribbler. Out of the timeout, Tony Barbie runs a set for his best three-point shooter, KT Harrell, who knocks down the big three to cut the Gator lead to three. How about that? Seven of nine from outside for the Tigers today. Malcolm Canada, by the way, just picked up his fourth foul. So both point guards now for Tony Barbie have four. Dixon, Dixon Tatum has four as well. So some foul trouble for the Tigers as Casey Hill makes the first. Auburn does not have the inside scoring ability that Florida has. So they neutralize the Gators with outside shooting. And Joe, as you mentioned, those seven for nine have been huge today for the Tigers. Only reason they're in it. Exactly. And you notice how Florida, after the three-point shot, comes down right away and responds. They've done that the last five possessions. Denson gets fouled by Wilbekin. That's the seven Florida foul. So Chris Denson who's had an adventure at the free throw line during SEC play. He'll have one and one. Third foul on Scotty Wilbekin. Chris Denson, who is the SEC's leading scorer, 19 and a half a game. Could be averaging a lot more than that if he's better at the foul line. You're exactly right. 61% coming in. Coming off a 24-point performance in Knoxville. More of the same for Auburn. Denson, three of seven from the strike. Attaway tipped it away from Young. Denson, one on three, splits the defense and scores. They're slapping the floor in the 2 3 zone. The Auburn Tigers got the great defensive play by their big freshman, Matthew Attaway, and this crowd is alive here in Auburn Arena.
How about Chris Denson, SEC's leading scorer, doing it again? Yeah, he's made two three-point shots this afternoon, which is not his forte. Got his shooting eye this afternoon, although not good at the foul line, but he drives as well as anybody in the league, uses body control, kisses the ball off the glass, and that alley-oop dunk, ladies and gentlemen, got to be a Sports Center top 10 highlight play this afternoon. I mean, he gets his steal here, and there's three blue shirts around him. Look at this. Yep, just the speed gets it all the way in. Great hustle by the senior. Shaw High School, Columbus, Georgia. Chris Denson. 21 for Denson. Tied for a game high with Casey Prather. Two points better than his season average. Auburn continues to hang around, as they've done now in all four SEC games. Is this the one where they finally get over the hump? Let's see if Florida responds. Florida has scored the last five possessions after Auburn has scored. Benny Smith left open. It got blocked by Harrell. Last touch by Auburn. Stays on this end of the floor. With nine seconds to shoot, Auburn trying to battle back from behind a shot number seven. Auburn has dropped 19 of its last 20 SEC games, but within three against the seventh ranked Florida Gators. 3.25 left to go. Jody Jr., Joe Davis back here at Auburn Arena. Nine to shoot as Florida inbounds. It's Will McKinnon. Four to shoot. Wilbekin against Denson. Left it short. And last touch by Auburn. A fresh possession for Florida and a big call right there. Well, a great job by Casey Prather to go for the rebound, but then back away and not commit a foul right there. See how he backs away? But he was in there just enough to force the turnover and give Florida the possession. This is their third chance on this possession. Wilbekin nearly turned it over and did. He ain't able to take it. Tigers can tie with a three. Malcolm Canada running the point. He has four fouls. So does, so does Kyle Shamsuddin. Both point guards for Tony Barber. Florida 2-3 zone here. They want to stop penetration by Chris Denson. That's the main reason they're in this defense. And not to foul also. So can Denson shoot him out of it? Left it short, but Canada the offensive board. Now Denson dribbled it off his knee. And here comes Finney Smith. Smartly will set it up. His team with four seniors. But now a freshman running the point. Yep. With 2.14 to go. Turnovers have been a bigger issue today for Florida than normal. Yeah, Florida had nine at the half. Only three in the second half. That was the fourth, and it was just an unforced error. Good job defensively of converging on Darian Finney-Smith, and then Casey Hill, the freshman, just lost the handle there. Taz Shamsuddin back into the game for Auburn. Malcolm Canada takes the seat with 2.10 left. Auburn's got their four, four of their five starters in the game. And Matthew Attaway inside. Shamsuddin off of the bench. Cuts it to one. Timeout, Billy Donovan. Good timeout right here by Billy Donovan. The Auburn Arena crowd is wild right now. The student section behind us even more so. Watch the screen right there. Good job on the screen. And Taj Shamsuddin, a freshman, Decatur, Georgia, with the big two-point basket for the Auburn Tigers. So now you're at a point that Auburn's familiar with. There are three losses in SEC play. By two at Ole Miss, by three here against Missouri last Saturday, and then an 11-point loss on Wednesday against Tennessee in a game that was close for the first 35 minutes. Tony Barbie has said it time and time again this week. Talk to us about it today. They've got to get over the hump. That goes to free throw shooting. 
And it comes down to getting a stop when they need it on the defensive end. Good teams find ways to win games down the stretch. Tony Barbie is trying to teach his guys how to win. Opportunity, maximum opportunity today against the seventh ranked team in the country. Minute 44 to go. Let's see if Auburn can find a way at home to pull this upset. The crowd's going to help them. They're back man to man right here. Senior point guard Will McKim with a shot clock inside of 10. Good defense, Canada. Will McKim on the drive. A step back goes for Scotty Will McKim. That's just a great individual play. That's not any offense. The defense was really pretty good right there, Joe. He couldn't find anybody to pass it to, but he's going against the freshman point guard, and he just used his size right here. Now he's actually against Canada, who is a freshman guard, a little bit bigger, but watch the step back. Nobody to throw it to. Into the lane, steps back, and then nice gets it in from about eight feet. Florida trying to win its ninth consecutive game. Not easy moving forward. Alabama never easy to go in there and beat. Tennessee, a team that a lot of people think could break through to be part of the upper echelon of the conference again. Mississippi State beat Texas A&M today. The other unbeaten coming into today's action. And then Missouri on the fourth, one of the top teams in the conference as well. Last year, there were probably three or four teams that you could almost pencil a victory when you went to play them, not this year. There are no easy outs this year in the SEC. Mississippi State is better. Auburn, we can see right here this afternoon, they are better. South Carolina is better. Texas A&M, who a lot of people thought would finish 11th or 12th, they're 3-1 and one in the league. It's a very balanced SEC this year, top to bottom. Auburn has one timeout remaining. Possession arrow pointing Florida's way with a minute nine to go. Auburn is seven of ten from outside today. Within a three of time this game. Florida's going to stay in the 2-3 zone. Michael Frazier is not in the game. He's the shooter, but he has not scored this afternoon. Frazier and Wilberton are the guards. Big Florida team on the floor right here. The game clock is not moving. Carroll, the game clock didn't move for the first 10 seconds of that possession. Inside of a minute in the three-point game. The officials don't realize it. They could correct that, but they're going to let them play here. Wilbekin gets fouled, and Sampsonine's finished. That's a senior play right there. No question about it. Scotty Wilbekin knows the freshman is on him. When he feels the contact, he just leans in a little bit because he knows a touch foul is going to be called. And it was, and he will go to the line for two shots. So Todd Shamsidian, their freshman point guard, will take a seat. Their other point guard, Malcolm Canada, has four. Beyond that, you figure Chris Denson would just run the point. You see Shamsadine right here just up too tight right there. That's a that's a body contact, and there's the call. Taj with two field goals today, three assists, but most impressive about the freshman, zero turnovers this afternoon by Taj Shamsadeen. The officials getting together here maybe to add some time to the clock. You wonder if they got a heads up from the table. They send both teams back to their bench. Yeah, they're going to have to look at the monitor. And as you called it, Joe Davis, the game clock did not start on the last Auburn possession. So we'll see if they put some time back on the clock. About the first, what, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds of that Auburn possession, the clock stayed at a minute five. And I'll tell you what, those seconds are important to Auburn, who's behind right now. So if the officials can, can find out exactly what the number is, they need to put that time back on the clock. 
So we'll take a look. Coming over to let us know. James Parker, Willie C.J. Washington, Jeffrey Clark, our SEC crew today. And have to watch it in real time to figure out exactly how much time there should be. Not sure if, yeah, not sure if our camera crew is able to get the game clock on that possession, but Joe Davis, you called it, and it, you were definitely correct. The game clock did not start for, I'm going to say, six or seven seconds on the last Auburn possession down on their end of the floor. So that's what the officials are going to have to, to try to decide how much time to put back on. And they may have to just go by what the clock operator tells them. He's not going to admit he made a mistake. <laughs> well, he needs to, if he, especially if he's the one that alerted them to this. Yeah. So Auburn, which is off to an 0-3 start, but he's been right there in all three games, now all four games in SEC play. Some winnable games moving forward. Yeah, they do. The Mississippi State, as we know, has won their last two home games against two good teams, Ole Miss and Texas A&M. The Arkansas game will be very difficult to play. Bill always is. Alabama, Auburn will be here with SEC TV on a Wednesday night. That's always a fun game when the Iron Bowl of basketball is played. So uh, a little, little easier road here in the next five games than what Auburn has had the first four. Three losses by a combined 16 to begin the conference schedule for an Auburn team that's dropped 19 of its last 20 in SEC play. And the officials still trying to figure out exactly how much time should be on the clock. Seniors on this Florida team. One of them, Scotty Wilbekin, has been big down the stretch. Yeah, he runs the show for the Gators. He's a senior with a lot of savvy. He's made a couple of big three-point baskets and driven into the lane as well. Those are the two threes he made in the second half to give Auburn the lead. This is huge right here. The step back, the little eight-foot jump shot. Scotty Wilbekin, senior out of Gainesville, Florida, has had a nice game this afternoon. They should drop some time off of the clock here. Forty-seven nine. Did they add some time? Well, they should have dropped time. Okay. Now the official James Barker just came over and explained to us that you know there was. A suspicion that the clock didn't start. We we recognize that, but they don't have video evidence of that, so there's nothing that they can do. Which benefits Auburn because time would have run off had they figured that out. Wilbicken off the front rim with his first free throw. One timeout left for both sides. And 48 seconds. One of two in a two-possession game. This is the biggest possession of the game right here for both teams. Auburn needs to score. Florida will get the ball back and will not have to shoot again. The shot clock will be off. Half a minute. Harold, their best outside shooter. Works inside and gets blocked by Patrick Young. A three on one for the Gators. Wilbekin pulls it out and gets fouled with 18 seconds. It's been Wilbekin, the senior on the offensive end, and now it's the other senior, Young, on the defensive end, trying to slam the door for the Gators. No question about it. They, Auburn had nothing going offensively, and KT Harrell tried to make something, had nothing, took it right into the six man, Patrick Young, and Patrick Young was right there. Didn't even leave the floor, kept his hands up, very smart and made the block. In and out for Wilbekin. 
He's missed two of his last three at the line after hitting his first four today. Dixon Tatum sits down. Matthew Attaway comes in. And Auburn finds itself looking in a really familiar spot here, battling in a close game against a very good SEC opponent. And the Birds have fallen short again. Here on the long three. Payne the offensive rebound. He can't bake it in. Out of bounds with 6.2. And Florida's going to win its ninth consecutive game. You don't figure they came into Auburn Arena thinking it'd be this difficult. One of the more difficult wins in that nine-game stretch. I'll tell you, Joe, Billy Donovan knows how hard it is to go on the road in the SEC. And his team has a bullseye on its back. They're getting to be a little bit like Kentucky in that they get everybody's best shot when they go on the road. Big crowd here today in Auburn Arena. They were excited, but just couldn't close the door. Great effort by Tony Barbie's team, though. Yeah, a foul before the ball is inbounded. They'll lead to a couple of free throws. 5.9 left. Florida will move to 15 and 2 on the season 4 0 in SEC play. It'll be the only unbeaten left in the conference after today. With Texas A&M falling in overtime against Mississippi State. And I'll tell you, this is a heartbreaker for Auburn. You know, they, they, they played four really tough SEC teams. They lose by three at Ole Miss, two to Missouri here, 11 in Knoxville with Tennessee, and today. They're going to lose a close one to the seventh-ranked Florida Gators. <laughs> Couple of substitutions. You get Young both come back in. Defensive subs for Billy Donovan. Well, Florida's going to win this game by a few possessions, but. Much closer than that. Denson can't hit. And Florida on the road fights off Auburn to win it 68-61. Tune in for more SEC action next Saturday at 1.30 with Georgia taking on Kentucky. Check your local listings for that one. For Jody Jr. and the rest of our crew, Joe Davis saying good afternoon. So long from Auburn.